and welcome to Formula Talk, a brand new series from F1 Chronicle, where we talk about everything F2, F3, and any other type of motorsport related racing. My name is Sophia, and joining with me today is a familiar face and a familiar voice of the F1 Chronicle team, Tom Downey. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Yeah, really excited for this series. It's going to be a great one. No, absolutely. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you run the show. Thank you. But first, if you enjoy this podcast, we would love it if you would take five to leave us a five-star rating on Spotify or a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you do, you're automatically going to our monthly draw to win a Grid Talk t-shirt from our Champion Range of Merch. And if you're one of the 72% of people who haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider helping us out with a like, subscribe, or a share. So let's get into it. Let's do so, it. So Formula Talk pretty much we will be discussing everything to do that's not F1 related. So this is F2, F3, so the lower uh, division, same as some even the regional ones. Obviously, if XF1 drivers have done well in other series like IndyCar or Formula E, we'll definitely bring them into the conversation as well. So let's get into the first episode. So throughout the series, it's a weekly basis. You can catch us on all streaming sites and also on YouTube down the line. We'll even potentially have some drivers and some names within the motorsport community on this podcast. So what is F2? F2 is the penultimate division before F1, started back in 2017. This comprises of 11 teams with two drivers per constructor. This also does take place alongside the F1 races at the same circuits. Formula 3, which started in 2019, has 10 teams but three drivers each. For F2, we have a Big calendar coming ahead of us with a record of 14 races with the introduction of Melbourne. And it's going to be probably one of the best seasons so far with a lot of new drivers coming into F2 from the F3 and other divisions. However, F2 and F3 are structured slightly differently to F1. It follows the recently introduced sprint race format, where we will see both F2 and F3 drivers have a single practice session on the Friday for 45 minutes after which there is a 30-minute qualifying session. This session for F2 usually takes place in between FP1 and FP2 for Formula 1, but occasionally it can move if there have been delays and or timing issues. Usually, we see these sessions moved either if there's been a red flag one of the sessions or if there is inclement weather. Saturday kicks off the first part of the race weekend with a sprint race, and this will consist of 120 kilometres or 45 minutes, whichever one comes first. There's a bit of a difference between sprints in F1 and the junior series. F1, the sprint, as we all know, sets the grid for the race on Sunday, whereas to have the grid set for uh, for the main race, the top 10 finishing positions are reversed in Formula 2 and Formula 3. So we see the often talked about but not implemented reverse grid procedure used in the junior series. So if a driver finishes 10th in qualifying, they will be on pole for the sprint. They will then start P10 for Sunday's race. The feature race, which is the Sunday race, and if you compare it to F1, is the Grand Prix race. It takes place on Sunday morning ahead of the F1 Grand Prix and consists of 170 kilometres or 60 minutes, whichever comes first. The feature race includes a compulsory pit stop in which all four tyres must be changed. Unless the driver has used wet weather tyres during the feature race, they must use at least one set of either specification of dry tyres during the future race. During the future race, so pretty much like F one rules. Basically, yeah, it, it's, bas- it's basically mini F one. Let's let's be fair. Now, that's, well, that's that's pretty much exactly what it is. I mean, it's the penultimate, and it's the progression to go up into F one. So you kind of want to be as close as possible to F one as possible, because again. If you win F2, you can't race in F2 anymore. So the only way is up and hopefully get into F1. Yeah, all sideways of Formula E. Ask Nick DeVries. Uh, Yes. In the car. (laughs) Nick's come back. Nick's coming back this season. Yeah, the 27-year-old rookie. That's that's like practically granddad money by today's standards in F1. But um, but just 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 going back to the structure of moment for uh, for for Formula Two and Formula Three. Let's talk about the points quickly. Um, as now, as, as we all know, F1 experimented with awarding points in the sprints. They originally only awarded points to the top three. And then when they realized it was either ham bot ver or ham per ver or, or ham or ver ham bot or ver per ham or whatever, 
whatever acronym of the, those three you want to make up, although I think Norris got in, in there at some point um, <laughs> in 2021, they uh, F, F1 have looked at F2 and gone, do you know what? Sometimes they used to do it better and they do know what they're talking about. So in, this, in the sprint race, the top eight drivers will be awarded uh, points from 10th down to 1st, the same as we get in a sprint in F1. Then for the feature race, it follows the same points procedure as Formula 1. So 25 points for P1, 18 for P2, 15 P3, etc. down to one point for 10th. The driver with the fastest lap also gets points. They finish in, in the top 10. And also F2 does indeed have DRS. But in the yeah. same way as, um, as we have in Formula 1, you cannot activate it if you're going through yellow flags. It's only available starting lap 3. And the DRS zones are in the same place for F2 and F3 as they are for Formula One. It's a circuit dependent thing, DRS. It's not a car dependent thing. Yep. There's also an opportunity as well for drivers to get points on the Friday in qualifying, with the driver that takes pole actually getting awarded two points as well. So I why doesn't F1 get that? Like I feel with all the battles and like the close point systems. You would think maybe adding in something like that might make it even more interesting, especially because we've had different pole sitters this previous season. I I think it's good for for something like F two F three, especially because it's a spec series. You know, we we you know it it just adds a bit more because all the cars are fundamentally the same. I know drivers will will run will run different wings, different you know you know they might run different you know they'll have different. Setups, but all, but all the sort of structure and, and the the chassis, you know, this is all this all Delara chassis and the Mechachrome engines. I quite like that, and it's um, you know, I, I also think that F two in general certainly t- tends to sort of lend itself to some really really close like wheel to wheel racing. You know, you see drivers mm-hmm. going side by side, and um, maybe it's the exuberance of youth as well. But uh, you know, we, we we do we do see some damn good racing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, with F2 and F3, it changes all the time. It just battles out. Last season, which we'll definitely talk about in another episode, you never knew who was going to win at all because one minute you had somebody else on top and then a sprint race and a DNF pretty much dropped them down to like fifth. Like it, it goes crazy, especially because all these drivers are wanting to get into F1. That That's obviously the pinnacle. That's the goal. The willing to get their elbows out they're willing to take the risks like oh some of them like going three cars wide absolutely amazing and like the overtaking as well like they're overtaking spots that you wouldn't see in f1 and again this is why i i enjoy watching this series because they're striving to be the best that they can and try to get those coveted f1 seats because they're not that many of them obviously with only the 10 constructors and the two seats similar to again f2 minus the one constructor but it's going to be interesting. And like you said as well, it's all the same. So they have the Delara chassis and the V6, but each team kind of has different styles on how they do the wings, how they set it up. Um, and they do use Pirelli tires as well, which questionable sometimes. <laughs> um, it's not as bad as F1 though. It's not like Baku, um, but there's been some moments um, with wheels coming off, which memorable moments and again that's another episode we got to talk about at some point but let's go back to the calendar so as mentioned f2 has 14 races this season f3 has 10 and again following um similar to f2 f3 is also going to be racing in melbourne and they've also introduced monaco as well into f3 that's going to be absolutely mental trying to have all these cars and again it's 10 constructors with three drivers each on the streets of Monaco. Qualifying is a bit different. They do it in groups, same as F2. They do the qualifying stages in groups to ensure that there's enough space for each driver to have a push lap. But I I can't wait for that. I hope I can go to Monaco. Like That seems like such a great race to see because for me as well, the tracks that are considered kind of boring in F1 the not boring for F2 and F3. And I encourage anybody who has Sky or now TV or any of the programs that can access F2 and F3 to definitely watch it. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't think of things that, that don't go together more than all F3 cars in Monaco. I mean, that's just... 30. Gonna be, yeah, that's just going to be Demolition Derby. I mean, I mean that run into Sandovot would just... 
Oh, I can't wait. That's gonna be a that's gonna be interesting. I think it's um I'm I gotta be I'm I'm glad to see the support series go to Melbourne, um because quite often we've seen poor Super Cup and we've seen like um we've seen like show runs from the eight supercars and stuff there. But I think um certainly certainly have two. I I think it's I think it's gonna be good for um it's it's gonna be good for the series. It's gonna be good for the circuit as well. And also those drivers in in F two who want to get into F one, it's good exposure to a different kind of street circuit, because you know because obviously Melbourne is a street circuit, but it's not it's not a street circuit in the sense of Monaco is, um, you know which is obviously incredibly tight, twisty. It's uh, Albert Park has got that nice sort of balance to it. So I'm I'm quite looking forward to that this season actually, and then Baku is obviously always carnage. Yeah, like the streets as well, like and the speed in Melbourne as well. It's going to be great. Obviously, they're not as powerful as F1 cars, but they still carry a lot of power. Unfortunately, due to Baku having the sprint races in F1, it seems that F3 has taken Baku off the calendar this year, which is really upsetting for me. It's one of my favorite tracks, and to have all three of them, all three series racing on the streets there is probably one of my favorite weekends. Um to go to but it totally makes sense because of the logistics not to have um baku for all three so f2 will be racing it so getting into the calendar um as mentioned we mentioned melbourne and monaco so for f2 the 14 circuits are the bahrain jetta melbourne azerbaijan baku imola monaco barcelona austria silverson budapest spa zanfort Monza, and then they take about a month and then finish in Abu Dhabi for F2. There's also one testing that takes place mid-season and also in the beginning of the season. First testing is in Bahrain, and then the second one is in Barcelona. F3, bit different. So there's 10 races, again, using the same F1 tracks. So these are Bahrain, Melbourne, Imola, Monaco, Barcelona, Austria, Silverstone, Budapest, Spa, and to finish off the season is Monza. And again, they also have a month off from Spa to Monza to finish. But they also have two testings in April, both in Barcelona and one testing in Bahrain as well. It's all in the same weeks, pretty much. Um, The single testing in Barcelona and the single testing in Bahrain, they use the same kind of weekend or sometimes overlapping or the next days. Um, Really excited for that. We have so many rookie drivers in F2 and F3, we have drivers from different divisions. Um, I've mentioned before Freca, which is like the F4 regional for the European regional. A lot of drivers coming into that, which is why we will spend some um, some time to discuss it as well down the line. Because again, it's another great pro- progression into the series as well. So as mentioned, this is the first episode of Formula Talk by F1 Chronicle. We'll be streaming every week, whether it's on YouTube or on all streaming platforms. So let's discuss what's going to happen for the next couple of episodes while we're patiently waiting for the new season. Only got about like 40 days or something left until the season starts. Can't wait. What about you? No, I'm really excited so for, for the, the new season. You know, we've got Racing Champions just around the corner. We've got all, all the new liveries being announced and we've got most... You know the majority of the t- of the drivers are announced. You know, we um, on the day of recording, I think we had um, uh, we had Johan Derubla confirmed today. Going back to, I believe, it was MP Motorsport. Yeah, I thought I thought so. Yeah, I don't have it open in front, of me, but I, I thought it was. We've got a few seats still outstanding in Formula Three, but F two is full, F one is full. You know, we've got we've got testing around the corner in in a few weeks, you know, when the teams are going to be jetting off to here, there, and everywhere. We're going to start to see cars on track. For the first time and next thing you know it's going to be it's going to be march and we're going to be we're going to be hearing you know commentators go wild we're going to be sitting down watching all sorts of motorsport doing podcast after podcast about it and i am so hyped i am so hyped especially when drive to survive comes out now i know people listen to this and going, to survive. yes i know it's not real. I know it's Netflix and, you know, it's just a meme by this point, but it just gets you pumped for the season because it's like once now, once we know the drive to survive is coming out, it's like, okay, right. The next season is upon us. Let's do this. And I, I'm just, sorry, that sounded really artificial, but I do get like that when drive to survive comes out. It's just like, you know, sort of like, it's, it's, it's like the holiday period is over and everybody has awoken. So 
yeah, I'm looking looking forward to it, looking forward to testing as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same. Uh, Josh and I, I don't really watch it that much. Um, I'll be watching a few of the episodes because of how great the season's been so far, especially with George's first win and a few other races as well. Silverstone as well with Carlos's first win. If you do also like Drive to Survive, you definitely need to check out Chasing the Dream, which is kind of F2's version of Drive to Survive. It's on YouTube, I believe, as well. That's also a great insight as well as to how F2 is very different to F1. And you even have some W Series drivers who, obviously, with the season ending quite early, did have opportunities to actually get into F2 cars and test, which is a great opportunity as well. You got the F1 Academy that's hopefully going to be starting this season as well. So it'll be a great progression for it. But I'm honestly so excited. Like, I feel like I just want to binge watch Drive to Survive now or just like watch as many kind of like racing documentaries as possible. But yeah, like you said, F2 grid fully confirmed now as of today. We got a third left for Formula 3, which some of them are even full teams of non-confirmed drivers. So it'll be quite interesting to see. So the next couple episodes, we'll be discussing the current F2 grid and the current F3 grid. And then how last season went, because both both F2 and F3 actually finished under red flag and did not finish. And it was a trying to understand who actually was going to win by points, which is quite a cool. um, it, It was manic a little bit like we just didn't know who was winning. It was the same as Max, like didn't know that he won the world championship because the point system and all that, it was literally that for F2 and F3. So we'll discuss it a bit further as well um, in the next couple of episodes. And then talking about our predictions and then any other series as well, as Tom mentioned, we got race of champions. That's going to be starting um, this weekend, actually. And that actually includes the current F2 uh, world championship champion, Felipe Djokovic. He'll be racing, which will be great to see as well. Yeah. It's going to be, Good to see Drogovic, um, you know, still behind the wheel because he's he's effectively got a Piastri year now where he's going to sit on the sidelines. Big question is, are we in twelve on sign? Going to be talking about how he's fallen out with Lance Roll and tweeted how he's not going to be racing for Aston Martin. And he is going to be racing for someone else. That's what I'm wondering. You know, if he's going to take a leave out Piastri's book, I hope not. But um, but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it, it, it'd be. I can't remember who he's partnered with in Racing Champions. Um, I don't even know if it's been announced. I'm not sure, actually. I know yeah. they're slowly introducing, because obviously we know that Mick and Seb will be racing, Seven. and then Sebastian Loeb and oh, someone else will be racing. I know Felix Rosenquist, Formula E, and IndyCar current driver from McLaren will be racing. There's a few other ones. I think there's like 25 world titles in the grid, which is great. So that's definitely something we're definitely going to be discussing in the next episode as well. Yeah, I'm looking, looking forward to that one. There are so many taking part in, in racing champions this year. And we've got we've got people from the um sadly now the front W series taking part as well, I believe. Yeah, and I just just looking looking through the um oh uh Valtteri Bottas is taking part. That's that's who else. Oh yeah, there. finally and, as well. This is, yeah, Jimmy Tad David Coulthard, so they wheeled him at the retirement home. Um our town of Faust, our Hackinen, wonderful come on Sebastian. Um yeah, we've got our Petter Solberg, we've got all sorts. I'm looking forward to the race champions, actually. It's in Sweden as well, so. Yeah, it was really cool last season, uh, last race as well, last year uh, in Sweden. It was actually quite interesting because half the track melted away. So they had to, like, condense it the day before the race, which was quite cool. And it was my first time watching it as well. And it was kind of my start of kind of getting more involved in motorsport as well was around this time, writing about race of champions, which is so, it's a great feeling now a year on starting this podcast with you being a part of F1 Chronicle and being on the panelists with you guys and with all my other work as well with everything F1 it's crazy it's been a year yeah it, it, it has been and you know what it's going to be an even better year this year definitely so Formula Talk is available on YouTube where most of the episodes will be recorded live as well as Amazon Fire Spotify Google Podcasts Apple Music Verbal and Pocket Cast. As this is the first episode, we don't have a back catalog yet, but as mentioned, we are part of F1 Chronicle. So just search Formula One Grid Talk for all our back catalog of shows with previews, reactions to qualifying and race results. You can get some hands on some official Grid Talk merch on f1chronicle.com slash store. Also, make sure you subscribe to us so you're the first to know when each new weekly episode is released. 
We'll be back soon with plenty more motorsport content. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Tom, for joining me on this episode. Thank you very much, my friend. Glad to be part of it. And that's also goodbye for me as well. Thank you.